Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Brendan Cole. The sexual grooming of children in the UK is a much bigger problem than has previously been recognised, the government has just said. The Children's Minister, Tim Loughton, has just announced that an action plan will be launched to tackle child sexual exploitation. It comes just days after a group of men were arrested in a second sex grooming case uncovered by the police who smashed the notorious Rochdale child sex ring. That particular case, nine Asian men from Rochdale and Oldham were jailed over the sexual exploitation of girls. The fact that they were a network of Asian origin exploiting non-Asian girls has sparked much controversy. The judge presiding over the case, Gerald Clifton, suggested that they had targeted their victims because they were not of their own community or religion. But police and political leaders have denied that the crimes were about race, saying that the men had simply targeted victims because they were vulnerable. Well, to discuss this issue, I'm joined by Fiaz Mughal. He's the founder and director of the Faith Matters Group. Um, it's also set up a new helpline to monitor anti-Muslim attacks. On the phone, we have Wendy Shepherd. She's the Children's Services Manager for Child Sexual Exploitation uh, for the country's biggest charity for children, Bernardo's. And we have Tommy Robinson. He's the leader of the English Defence League, which is a group which is campaigning against what they see, the rise of Islamification. And on Skype we have Professor Roger Griffin. He's a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University and is in particular following the rise of Islamophobia. Fiaz Mughal, I'm going to start with you. The case in Rochdale last week, how shocking was it for the Muslim community? I mean, it is, it's shocking for any community, and I think uh, in this instance it's, uh, it is shocking because these individuals were, were, were in the community and uh, you know, seemed to be part and parcel of the community doing everyday jobs. And so clearly for some it's come as a shock, and it should be because these things should not happen at all. It doesn't matter which community you are, but uh, I think there's some introspection, introspection in the sense that when this happens in any community, people need to look into how they can try to uh, pick uh, some of the issues and behaviours that are taking place with individuals they know. I think we're not talking about snooping here, we're talking about realising that the most vulnerable in our society need to be protected. And actually, Mohammed Shafiq from the Ramadan Foundation said last week that the sexual abuse that came out of this case, how it came out of this trial, does go on in the Pakistani community, for instance, but some in those communities bury their heads in the sand over the issue. Would you agree with that? I think that um, we, I think to label this and say, well, it's an issue of the Pakistani community is, is really problematic. We have, we have these issues around uh, uh, burying information in a whole range of different communities in this country, particularly new migrant communities who are bringing over sometimes cultures which are, which are different to, to the UK culture. Now, saying that, um, we, you know, we shouldn't make this uh, on the basis of racial uh, communities, but, and, and the but is, when there are vulnerable individuals affected, particularly young uh, females and males, uh, the community, any community which finds itself in that position, needs to start to, to ask, how do we put into effect measures where this does not happen, and particularly from that specific community? Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, you're at the front line uh, in dealing with um, sexually abused children. Do you think, uh, in, the, in the wake of this Rochdale case, that there is an ethnic dimension to abuse cases in your own experience? I think until we take a real proper look across the country, uh, we've, we cannot assume that this is just happening with uh, British Asian communities. We haven't had, we've had two examples where that has happened, and we, of course, have got to take a look and deal with what those issues are. However, to put this on particularly the Asian Pakistanis is wrong. Uh, I've been in this uh, work for the last 12 years, and I've seen every type of ethnic uh, uh, abuser uh, that's been involved in the exploitation of children. And I think it's right society actually buries its head about sexual ex abuse and sexual exploitation, and that's what we need to be addressing. We have attitudes that young men and uh, boys have, and adult males, about women and children that still need to be uh, really uh, raised, uh, awareness being raised about. Uh, and until we do that uh, succinctly and efficiently, we will continue to have young people exploited and abused in this way. Tommy Robinson from the English Defence League. The case last week was abhorrent for everybody, but there's no racial element to this, is there? Of course there is. There's not racial, there's a religious one. Um, but this case in Rochdale, there's another case coming up at the end of this month or the start of June with another seven Muslim men and another 50 young girls aged 11 to 14 identified in Oxford. We've had 60 girls in Telford. We've had 100 girls identified by the police in Blackpool. These are all Pakistani Muslim men. Um, when we, if you ask a Muslim in Britain what is their, what is their objective in, in modern Britain is to emulate their prophet Muhammad. Now, 1,400 years ago, it was a long time ago, but Muhammad married a six-year-old child called Aisha. 
and he consummated that marriage when she was nine. Okay? Now, that's, that was 1,400 years ago. I don't blame Mohammed. 1,400 years ago. Up until 1875, you could have sex with 11-year-old kids in Britain, yeah? We've evolved, we've moved on. When imams start accepting and teaching that Mohammed was completely and categorically wrong for doing that, we might be getting somewhere. When you draw a link and a parallel, I think it's, um, it's Surah, Surah, Surah 23, verse 1 to 6. It says quite clearly in the Quran that you can take non-Muslim women as sexual slaves. You can. So what we see is people, and, and one of the Pakistani men in court said, it was it come up that he said, it's okay. It's okay in my, in my country. Okay, back to, back to Fiaz Magal. This, yeah. is, this is obviously um, an issue that is uh, being used by some extremist groups to foster resentment against uh, Muslims. I mean, what can, you, what can your group do, and what, what, what's your reaction to that? I mean, the reaction's pretty simple. I mean, Tommy seems to forget the fact that in 2009 there was a paedophile ring in Scotland eight white individuals. Does he say they're Christian individuals? The answer is no. Tommy's been on record a number of occasions attacking specifically Islam and Muslims. When he talks about paedophilia in Pakistan, he's just mentioned that. There's no such thing. Let me tell you, Tommy, we work in Pakistan. There are many, many imams in this country who actually stand up against injustice. You simply are trying to promote an anti-Muslim rhetoric because your group has distinctly come out as an anti-Muslim group. You also go on to mention the fact of the Prophet Muhammad. I mean, I, to be lectured by somebody on Islam who actually has a deep hatred of Islam is quite pathetic, actually. The reality is... Muslims in this country live very simple, decent lives, want to get on in this country. We have no desire, and I'm speaking as a Muslim myself, we have no desire to cause any damage to this country because it's our country, Tommy, and I think you seem to forget that. The reality is where we find any incidents of child grooming, that needs to be busted up, whether they are white individuals in Scotland, whether they are Asians, whether they are blacks, Chinese, where we find that, we need to bust it. Where, where I have a personal issue with what Tommy goes on about, he's trying to create effectively a religious and race war in this country. We don't need it, we don't want it. Tommy, frankly, I think you need to belt up. Professor, Ro Professor Roger Griffin, we'll go to you from Oxford Brooks University. Um, you're an expert in, uh, in extremism across Europe, but also the rise of, of Islamophobia across Europe. Do some groups that have been described as extremist use cases like this to increase recruitment? Uh, we've had a wonderful example just now. Uh, the well, obviously, any group that victimizes any other ethnic or religious group will pick on any headline-grabbing event which seems to confirm the stereotype. And, and if you look at, for example, Hitler's Germany and stereotyping of Jews, or there are thousands of different examples, um, it, it is quite natural that if you have a narrative which says that there is a community in your midst which is not able to be integrated because they are different, then any such piece of news will be exploited. And incidentally, there, it's not just in, in Britain that groups are trying to find any examples of intolerance or, or, or crime or abuse of minors or practices within faith communities to vilify the group. It is obviously totally abhorrent to the, the vast majority of Muslims what has happened. And the idea that somehow this group was using the Quran as justification for what it was doing, I'm afraid, is, 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 a, a, is a very skewed argument. Um, can I just point out also that within this context that every single institution has weaknesses and fallibilities, and if you look at the recent uh, events unfolding in Ireland about the Catholic Church, uh, you, you have yet another example of child abuse which as it is not an indictment of Christianity, it's an indictment of the, an institution which has fostered certain practices and not dealt with them properly. And, and if I can infer from that something which I suppose we, we should be debating in this program, uh, it is both for civil society as a whole and for the, 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 the group in particular, uh, the Muslim society and Pakistani communities, to, to tread on this viper as, as quickly as it can, um, but but to, to use it as an example of uh, of, of Islam uh, being somehow pedophilic in its nature, I'm, I'm afraid is is the, is typical of the way extremist groups will exploit this sort of incident. Uh, Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, do you think the argument about race and religion somehow detracts from? Uh, the wider fight against child abuse. I certainly do. I think whilst uh, we continue to focus on who the perpetrators are and their ethnicity, we fail consistently about those children that are being sexually exploited. And the minute we start blaming one group, we'll stop looking at all groups. The fact is, 
every every race is has a potential to abuse children and it's been borne out with court cases with imprisonments uh, over centuries and the, uh, the the point is here we have vulnerable children that get preyed upon upon by predatory adults who really don't give a care about what they're doing to those children, and it's nothing about race and all about sexual abuse. Uh, Tommy Robinson uh, from the EDL, uh, you're clearly exploiting this issue, aren't you, for your own in, for your own ends and for your own gains? It's ridiculous to say that. Who, excuse me, in working class communities, whose daughters, whose sisters, I meet the families of some of these children. I meet the families of these children because that's who's being affected, not the people, the politicians living in the suburbs, it's our kids. 80% of grooming cases are Pakistani Muslim men. 3% of this country is Pakistani Muslim men. That is massively and ridiculously over, overpopulated in, in, in the case. And, and, and there has to be a reason why. What is the reason why? Anyway, can, I just draw, can I just draw your attention? Can I just draw your attention to a, a renowned, renowned case that, um, that I guess in the studio referred to, the case in 2009, a group of men in Scotland who, who were convicted of uh, child child sexual uh, offences, they were all white and the whole community wasn't stigmatised because of that. Grooming in gangs, yeah, passing them round in gangs, specifically targeting a different culture and religion. What would happen, tell us the truth, what would happen if nine Christian men, right, in, in all these towns and cities were, were passing around Muslim girls and raping them? Everyone would be going absolutely living, absolutely wild. There's been a conspiracy of silence, a complete letdown of these girls, a complete letdown by the system and a failure due to political correctness by our police forces, by our politicians. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess the wider issue here is that um, there's, there are sections of the British community that feel that these girls were let down by social services, by the police. Um, there was uh, the police had evidence that um, they should have investigated these cases. They chose not to for what some say is a fear of uh, of being accused of racism. This is a big problem, isn't it? I mean, I think this is the first. There is a problem here in, the, in that this case. You're right. You're right to say wasn't picked up, and actually the CPS was not going to prosecute until. And let me just state this for Tommy: until a, a, a prosecutor of Pakistani Muslim origin. Uh, Nazir Afsal, the prosecutor in the West Midlands, picked up the case and prosecuted the case. So, you know, Tommy's here sitting talking about Muslim individuals. The very prosecutor who took up the case was a Pakistani British male. Now, saying that, yes, we have in our society the fact that on Saturday night, if you walk out on Saturday night, you will see many young girls who will drink a lot and unfortunately be in a vulnerable position. I think in our society we need to reflect on the fact that there are vulnerabilities, particularly for the young females, and that all of us as, within communities need to be able to uh, reach out and provide some kind of assistance and guidance to these individuals. Um, what I have a real problem with, and I think many of the speakers have a problem with, is when, when Tommy Robinson comes on here and, and thinks, first of all, he's a theologian on Islam, which is distinctly uh, poisonous, and then says that actually as Muslims we wake up and, uh, you know, we want to con conduct pedophilia. Well, let me tell you, Tommy, the fact of the matter is that, you know, for many of us working in social services who want to reach out and help the vulnerable in society, you are not just offensive, you are grossly uh, wrong. So you are misquoting facts, taking facts out of context, but all of us should reach out to those people, particularly young females in our society, and give them the opportunity to be protected. Wendy Shepherd from Bernardo's, do you make demands on what local councils should do and what the police should do? Uh, absolutely. Where we run our services, we are uh, inf influencing the police and social care every day about what needs to happen to those children that are sexually exploited. And first and foremost, you need to identify what the problem is, who those vulnerable young people are, and who those potential perpetratory men are, and then put the protection around those young people. Uh, not every young person that's been sexually exploited is somebody that goes out and drinks on a Saturday night either. These can be simply young people who are around a park, sat doing childhood uh, young people things that do get approached by males, again, of def diff every different ethnicity. Uh, so it's important that we recognise what can happen and that every local authority, every police force, every social care, every community member takes their responsibility about protecting children.